So which passage do we want to talk about? Yeah. Which passage? Well, Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. 24 to 26. 24 to 26. Yeah. To 26. Yeah. Okay. Right. Without using any foul words. Yeah, well, you try that. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm you try that. I'm, I'm quoting yeah. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's when I said don't, I didn't say, I'm not let's looking at my own word. Let's have a look at it. Matthew 24. Yeah. Right. Matthew. Do you want, wait, wait, wait. Matthew. Do you want to have a conversation? Matthew. Do you want to have a conversation? Matthew 15. Right, can we time this? Matthew Let's time 15, this. 24, Let's time 26. this. I'm going to give him three minutes to talk, and I won't interrupt him. Okay. What are you but I bet at? you he oh. interrupts me continuously through my three minutes. Matthew yeah. 23, no, Matthew, Matthew 15. 15. Matthew 15. Let us just get a clock and we'll time it. Matthew 15. Time it there. Right. right, when you're ready, three minutes, three minutes, three minutes. Three minutes. All right, it's going to take about 30 seconds. Okay, begin. No, you begin, Bob. Look, I tell you the truth. This Bible, I'm holding. I'm holding. Speak up, speak up. Excuse me, can I? I'm holding. Can I? No? This Bible, which you're holding, absolutely has nothing to do with the promise of the Gentiles. It's only for the Israelites. You read it from Genesis up to the Revelation. There's nothing here for the Gentiles. When you, when you look in the Bible and in Genesis, it talks about only racism, starting from Genesis and the table of nations. When you talk about Jesus, when you talk about Jesus, all right, Jesus deliberately said to his disciples, do not go among the Gentiles, for was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? A woman came down to him, a woman came down to him, a woman who she believes him, she believes him strongly with a great belief, with her daughter, came down to him, Lord, call him Lord, my daughter, she's possessed by the devil, he said, and Harry, and his disciple, away from me, away from me, he said, I was looking at her, I was willing to say to the most of the house of God, this phrase alone, only means only, not right now and then I'll come back to you, you see, it's so dangerous. Don't even say son of God. My daughter is sick. It's not right for me to take a trip very great. Go to the dogs. Who is meaning about dogs here? All the Gentiles. All the Gentiles. To me, he said, but he gave her the crumbs if you look at the egg. He gave her the crumbs. He saved her. The question is, where are you here? Is Jesus serious by calling her a dog? Or was he joking? He was serious. Testing her. All these things not serious. Joking. Let's start from here. Hold it. How much time has he given away? About 50 seconds. About 50 seconds. Okay. So let me reply to this. So the brother quotes Matthew at 14, 21 to, sorry, Matthew 15, 21 to 28. I'm not going to use up all my time by reading that passage. Thank you for calling me, brother. So what, uh, what I'm going to... Now notice he's interrupting straight away. Thank you. See, he's still interrupting. So let's, let's actually just look at what the Bible does teach in terms of the significance of Christ. So speaking of Christ's significance, because the brother is trying to argue that the Bible teaches racism. Now, this is what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 15. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in the place of two. That's the Jew and the Gentile. Thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body, that's his body, through the cross, thus putting death to death, the hostility through it. So the Bible is saying that through Christ's ministry and life, through his death, the great dividing wall between the Jews and the Gentiles was torn down. And that one, no, one humanity was created in Jesus, one humanity. So why then, in the Gospel of Matthew, does he refer to the woman 
as dogs, to the Gentiles as dogs. It seems to our Western European ears offensive. The problem that he doesn't know and he doesn't understand is that the word that he's translated as dogs in the Greek is a diminutive word. Diminutive words are words like in Spanish, rather than saying chica, you say chiquita, which means little girl. And you, it's not used as an insult, it's used as a familial phrase. It's like in the north of England, when they say pet, or petal, or love, or duck, it's a diminutive. They don't, they're not insulting you by calling you an animal, they're being familiar with you because they are trying to be friendly with you. So when Christ used the diminutive of the Canaanite woman, he wasn't being insulting, he was being familial. And the fact that she felt emboldened proves that she didn't feel rejected. Three minutes. Thank you. Okay, ready? 20 seconds, so I'll have three minutes, 20 seconds. So, ladies and gentlemen, as always with the Dawah script, when you disprove their arguments, they just move on to the next part of the script. I showed him in the New Testament where the Bible teaches that Christ is making one humanity. And what was his reply? Well, I don't want to listen to that bit of the Bible. The reason why he did that is because that bit of the Bible doesn't work for his script. And so he just wants us to listen to that phrase over and over again. He called the Gentiles dogs. But notice, he didn't actually listen to what I said about those very words. There are two words for dogs in Greek. One is the family dog, the pet. It's a familial phrase. And the other is the dog of the street. That's the insulting one. Jesus uses the, word, the Greek term 
to refer to the family pet. It is a diminutive, a familial phrase. The woman did not feel insulted, she felt emboldened to continue her request and Jesus grants her request. No, he said, Jesus said, I have only come to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Here's what I say to that as a Christian. Amen.